أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين فصوص الإيمان is a concise format of explanations related to Sahih Iman based on Tafsir Asadi and Irshad Al-Asadi. This book series is named Fusus Al-Iman, Bezels of Faith, with the intention that it may be used by the people as an anchor of Sahih Iman when sailing in the oceans of knowledge of Quran and Ahadith. For the students of Quran and Ahadith, Fusus Al-Iman can act as a primer that will help them solidify their Iman and prepare them for facing the onslaught of deviant sects who misinterpret the Quranic verses and Ahadith to lead them away from Islam. Since Sahih Iman is the essential requirement of salvation in hereafter, it is important to have correct understanding of all issues related to Sahih Iman to become eligible for salvation. This book contains selected verses from the Surah. The explanations of these verses will, inshaAllah, benefit all Muslims of the world in protecting their Iman. Translation Ta-ha Explanation Ta-ha is known as a solemn verse, ayat muqatta Fourteen Arabic alphabets have been used in varied combinations in fourteen solemn verses, ayat muqatta in the form of initials of 29 chapters of Holy Quran. Taha is one of them. Since Quran is Mubeen, its description is clear and manifest. The meanings of all the verses of Quran, including solemn verses, are surely known to its principal addressee, that is Prophet Muhammad It is also likely that Prophet Muhammad has informed the meanings of these verses to some of his Sahaba and Awliyaullah. We believe in whatever is meant by the solemn verses by Allah and His Apostle Muhammad Since we have been commanded to read the Qur'an carefully and try to understand the significance of every verse of the Qur'an, we do ponder over these verses. And when we think by focusing our attention towards Allah and His Apostle Muhammad for guidance, it comes to our minds that the solemn verses are actually the solemn titles of Prophet Muhammad given by Allah throughout the Qur'an. Our understanding is based on the fact that Allah has addressed Prophet Muhammad in the Qur'an by specific names like Muzammil, O Beloved, who covers self in a coverlet, Mudassir, O Beloved, who covers self in a bedsheet. With this understanding, it is most likely that Prophet Wasallam's other names, titles have been mentioned in Qur'an by denoting certain initials or alphabets. الرحمن على العرش استوى Translation The most compassionate established the authority on the throne. Explanation Allah is the comprehensive name encompassing all his attributes. To be compassionate towards his servants is one of his attributes. It is in Quran The day we shall gather the righteous in front of the most compassionate like the guests gathered in front of the king to receive honors. Maryam 85 The above verse clarifies that his attribute of Rahmaniyat is ruling the world. What the believers will see in front of them on the day of resurrection is Tajalliya Rahman, who is the king of this cosmos. With this understanding, it is much easier to understand all related verses in this context. It is in Quran, Indeed, your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and earth in six days and then established himself above the throne. Al-Araf 54 Translation Verily, I am your Lord. In my presence, put off your shoes. You are in the sacred valley of Tuwa. Explanation Brief History Musa salam, belonged to the community of Israelis who were enslaved by Pharaoh of Egypt and were kept in appalling conditions. Ibn Abbas ta'ala anhu, narrated that once Pharaoh saw in his vision a fire came from Jerusalem and burned the houses of the Egyptians 
but did not harm to the children of Israel. He consulted his priests for its interpretation, who explained that a boy will be born among the children of Israel and the Egyptians will perish at his hands. Pharaoh got panic on this interpretation and ordered slaughter of all male children of Israelis, even the newborn, were hunted and killed. Killing of newborn male children of Israelis was carried out for some years. Then his aides warned him that this kind of slaughter was not in his economic interest, as slaves will vanish and there will be no one to work in their fields. In view of this, Pharaoh ordered to kill Israelis' newborn male child one year and let them live the following year. Musa salam's mother was pregnant with Harun salam in a year. That boy's way to be spared. Thus, she gave birth to the child publicly and safely. During a year in which boys were to be slain, she gave birth to Musa salam. She was terrified that he would be slain. The following events in this context have been described in Quran in Surah al khasas 7 to 30. And we inspired the mother of Musa salam, saying, Suckle him, Musa salam. But when you fear for his life, then cast him into the river in a wooden box and neither fear nor grieve. Verily, we shall bring him back to you and shall make him one of our apostles. She did as per the command, and the family of Pharaoh picked him up from off the river so that he would become to them an enemy and a cause of grief. Indeed, Pharaoh and Haman, his assistant, and their soldiers were deliberate sinners. When the child was picked up and showed to Pharaoh's wife, she said to Pharaoh, that the child will be a comfort of the eye for me and for you. Do not kill him. Perhaps he may benefit us, or we may adopt him as a son. And they perceived not. When infant Musa salam was placed into the river in a wooden box, the heart of Musa salam's mother became empty of everything with grief. She was about to disclose the facts to people. Had we, Allah, not bound fast her heart that she would be of the believers, then she said to her eldest daughter, the sister of Musa salam, to follow the wooden box from the bank of the river, so she watched him from a distance while they perceived not. When Musa salam was picked up by Pharaoh's people and was taken into palace, we, Allah, had prevented from him all wet nurses. So Musa salam's big sister, who followed the wooden box, told Pharaoh's people, Shall I direct you to a household that will be responsible for him, for you? while they are sincere for his upbringing? So we, Allah, restored him to his mother, that she might be content and not grieve, and that she would know that the promise of Allah is true. But most of the people do not know. And when Musa salam grew and attained his full strength and was mature, we bestowed upon him judgment and knowledge, and thus do we reward the doers of good. On one day, he, Musa salam, entered the city at a quiet time of inattention by its people and found therein two men fighting. One was from his people, Israelis, and the other from among his enemy, Egyptians. And the one from his people, Israelis, called for help to him against the one from his enemy. So Musa salam, went to help him and struck a blow to Egyptian and he was killed unintentionally. Musa salam, said to himself, This is from the work of Satan. Indeed, he is a manifest, misleading enemy. He said, My Lord, indeed I have wronged myself, so forgive me. And he, Allah, forgave him. Indeed, he is the forgiving, the merciful. Musa salam said, My Lord, for the favor you bestowed upon me, I will never ever help the criminals. And he became fearful, anticipating exposure of the killing in the city. The next day, it so happened that the one who sought his help the previous day cried out to him, once again as he was fighting with another Egyptian that day. Musa salam said to him, Indeed, you are a manifest wrongdoer. And when he wanted to strike the one who was an enemy to both of them, he said, O Musa salam, do you intend to kill me as you killed that man yesterday? You only want to be a tyrant in the land and do not want to be of the amending ones. Meanwhile, a man came from the farthest end of the city running. He said, O Musa salam, Indeed, the eminent ones, security personnel, are conferring over you, intending to kill you. So leave the city. Indeed, I am to you of the sincere advisors. So Musa salam left the city into the desert across Sinai Peninsula, fearful and anticipating persecution. 
He said, My Lord, save me from the wrongdoing people. And when he directed himself towards Madian, across Sinai Peninsula, he said, Perhaps my Lord will guide me to a secured way. And when he came to a well of Madian, he found there a crowd of people watering their flocks. And he found aside from them two women driving back their flocks. He said, What is your difficulty? They said, We do not water until the shepherds dispatch their flocks, and our father, Shoaib is an old man. So he watered their flocks for them, and he went back to the shade and said, My Lord, indeed I am for whatever good you would send down to me in need. After some time, one of the two women came to him walking with shyness. She said, Indeed, my father invites you so that he may reward you for having watered our sheep for us. So when he came to him, the father of the girls, and related to him his story, he said, Fear not, you have escaped from the wrongdoing people. One of the women said, O my father, hire him. Indeed, the best one you can hire is the strong and the trustworthy. When the father saw the sincerity of Musa salam, he said, Indeed, I wish to wed you, one of my two daughters, on the condition that you serve me for eight years. But if you complete ten, it will be a favor from you, and I do not wish to put you in difficulty. You will find me, if Allah wills, from among the righteous. Musa salam said, That is an agreement between me and you. Whichever of the two terms I complete, there is no injustice to me, and Allah over what we say is witness. When Musa salam had completed the term and was traveling with his family back to Egypt after more than a decade, he perceived from the direction of the Mount Tul a fire. He said to his family, Stay here. Indeed, I have perceived a fire. Perhaps I will bring you from there some information or burning wood from the fire that you may warm yourselves. But when he came to it, the fire, he was called from the right side of the valley in a blessed spot from the tree. O Musa salam, indeed I am Allah, Lord of the worlds. al Khasas 7-30 فَقُولَا لَهُ قَوْلًا لَّيِّنًا لَّعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Translation Speak to him gently so that he may take heed or be fearful of my punishment. Explanation The above verse clarifies that preaching has to be done with kind words and convincing arguments. It is important to provide the person an opportunity to listen to you and consider it coolly. Hateful speech and abusive and threatening language does not work. Translation Musa and Islam's staff swallowed by becoming a big snake, whatever they had thrown. Looking at the miracle, the magicians fell down in prostration, saying, We believe in the Lord of Musa salam and Harun. Salam. Explanation What is a miracle? It is an effective physical change in the fact of the matter. The magicians were aware of sorcery and were technically qualified to distinguish between sorcery and miracle. When they saw the real physical miraculous snake swallowing their ropes and sticks, they realized the truth instantly and became Muslims. Pharaoh was not a magician. He did not know the rules of the sorcery and he was extremely arrogant. Thus, he did not believe in the miracle and got angry on the magicians and suspected them to be colluded with Musa salam in the sorcery. <laughs> Translation We revealed to Musa salam, travel by night with my servants and strike a dry path through the sea for them, and do not fear being overtaken by Pharaoh or of drowning in the sea. Explanation After the magician's episode, Musa salam, stayed in Egypt for some years during which many events took place. The details are available in Surah Al Araf 130-147, Yunus 83-92, and Az Zukruf 46-56. In the end, a night was fixed for Israelis' exodus from Egypt. They gathered at a place and travelled as a caravan. 
and reached Red Sea from where they were to enter into Sinai Peninsula. Meanwhile, Pharaoh got the news of the Exodus and followed the Israelis with his army. Israelis were held up between the sea and Pharaoh's army to smite the sea with his staff and the sea was split and the water stood like two great walls in between a dry path and open for the Israelis to cross the sea. Pharaoh and his army followed Musa into the sea. The Israelis crossed the sea safely but as Pharaoh and his army reached the middle of the sea, the water walls joined together drowning Pharaoh and his entire army into the sea. يومئذ لا تنفع الشفاعة إلا من أذن له الرحمن ورضي له قولا. Translation On that day, intercession is not of any avail except his, to whom the all compassionate gives permission, and with whose words he is well pleased. Explanation The above verse clarifies an important issue. Who are the people who will be permitted to intercede in this world and on the day of resurrection? Indeed, they are prophets, sahaba, awliya, Allah, etc. Who are the ones who do not have the right to intercede in this world and on the day of resurrection? They are the idols worshipped by non-believers, their deities, false gods, and those to whom they associate divinity. The deities and their followers all are destined to be consigned to the fire of hell. Allah is the Lord of this cosmos who has the right to be worshipped. Other than him, all are his servants, and among servants, the prophets and the righteous servants, awliya Allah can intercede for the people in this world and in hereafter. How can prophets and awliya Allah help us in this world? They can pray Allah to forgive our sins and set right our issues in this world, and in hereafter, they can intercede in reduction of the punishment of sinners and in taking them out of hell. First, it is in Quran. Your guardian or solver of grievances can be Allah and his apostle sallallahu alaihi wasallam and those who believe who establish salah and pay zakat and bow down in prayer al maida 55 second it is in hadith it is related from malik ad dar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who was hadrat umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu's treasurer that the people suffered a drought during the caliphate of umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Whereupon a man came to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ and said, O Apostle of Allah ﷺ, ask for rain for your community, for verily they have but perished. After which the Prophet ﷺ appeared to him in the dream and told him, Go to Umar and give him my greeting, then tell him that they will be water. Tell him, you must be clever, cautious. The man went and told Umar ﷺ, the latter said, O oh my Lord, I spared no effort except in what escapes my power. The above hadith is mentioned by Imam Bukhari in his book, Tariq al-Kabir, Biography of Malik al-Dar. It is also narrated by Bayhaqi. Salafi scholar Ibn Tahmiyyah wrote this hadith in Sirat al-Mustaqim, page 373. Ibn Khatir cited it in Al-Bidaya wa Al-Nihaya and said, Isna duhu sahi. Ibn Abi Shayba cited it in the Musannaf with the sound Sahih chain as confirmed by Ibn Hajar who says Rawa Ibn Abi Shayba bi Isnadin Sahih and cited the hadith in Fat al-Bari. He identifies Malik al-Dar as Umar radiallahu ta'ala and his treasurer Khazin Umar and says that the man who visited and saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his dream is identified as the companion Bilal ibn al-Harith radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he counts this hadith among the reasons for Bukhari's naming of the chapter. The people's request to their leader for rain if they suffer drought. The narrators of the above hadith are A. Abu Muawiyah, B. Imam Amash, C. Abu Saleh Abd al Rahman bin Sayyid, D. Malik bin Ayyad al Dar. All of them are considered as authentic and famous narrators of a hadith whose narrations were taken by Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood and others. Third, Imam Malik was asked the following question by the Caliph Abu Jafar al-Mansur. Shall I face the Qibla with my back towards the grave of the Apostle of Allah وسلم, when making dua after salam? He replied, How could you turn your face away from him 
when he is the means wasila of your and your father adam alayhi salam's forgiveness to allah on the day of resurrection nay face him and ask for his intercession ishtash fi bihi so that allah will grant it to you as he said if they had only when they were unjust to themselves come to you and asked allah's forgiveness and the apostle had asked forgiveness for them they would have found allah indeed all forgiving most merciful annasa 64 The above is narrated by Al-Qadi Yad in Al-Shifa 2-92-93. Subki in Shifa Al-Siqam. Khastalani in Al-Mawahid Al-Ladunya. Ibn Jama' in Hidayat Al-Salik. Haytami in Al-Jawahar Al-Munazzam. And Tuhfat Al-Zuwar and others. Fourth, Al-Utbi, a sahabi, Rabi Allah Ta'ala Anhu said, As I was sitting by the grave of the Prophet, a Bedouin Arab came and said, O Apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have heard Allah saying, If they had only when they were unjust to themselves, come to you and ask Allah's forgiveness, and the Apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had asked forgiveness for them, they would have found Allah indeed all forgiving, most merciful. An-Nisa 64 So I have come to you asking forgiveness for my sins, seeking your intercession with my Lord. Then he left and I dozed and saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in my sleep. He said to me, "O Utbi radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu, run after the Bedouin and give him glad tidings that Allah has forgiven him." The above report is graded as mashhoor, established and well known and narrated by Nawawi Adkar, Al Majmu 8 to 217 and Al Ida fi Manasik Al Hajj, chapters on visiting the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ibn Jama'ah, Hidayat al-Salik 3-1384, Ibn Akhil, Al-Tadrikal Mughni, Al-Qurtubi, Tafsir of 4-64 in Ahkam al-Quran 5-265, Samhudi, Kulasat al-Wafa, Ibn Khatir, Tafsir 2-306, Taqi al-Din al-Subki, Ibn al-Jazi, Muthir al-Gharam, al-Sakin, Ila Ashraf al Amakin, page 490, Ibn Hajar al-Haytami, al-Jawahar, al-Munazzam, commentary by Nawabis, Ida, and others. 8. Imam Ahmad made tawassul through the Prophet wasallam as a part of every dua. This is reported by Allah al-Din al-Mardabi in his book Al-Insaf fi Marifat al-Raji min al-Khilaf ala Madhab Al Imam Al Mubajjal Ahmad Ibn Hanbal 3 to 456 The correct position of Hanbali school of thought is that it is permissible in one's supplication dua to use as means a pious person dead or alive and it is desirable وَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِنَ الصَّالِحَاتِ وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَا يَخَافُ ظُلْمًا وَلَا هَضْمًا Translation But he who does righteous deeds while he is a believer he will fear neither injustice nor deprivation in rewards Explanation It is important to note that the first and foremost requirement for salvation in hereafter is sahih iman If you do not have sahih iman in your heart all your good islamic deeds are of no avail sahih iman is essential and primary requirement for salvation in hereafter the scholars and followers of 72 deviant sects and their innumerable subgroups who do not have sahih iman in their hearts will have a lot of trouble on the day of resurrection when their salah zakat or charity will not be taken into account in view of their beliefs contrary sahih iman What is the use of following the beliefs of a sect which will be of no use on the day of judgment? فَتَعَالَى اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقُّ وَلَا تَعْجَلْ بِالْقُرْآنِ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يُقْضَى إِلَيْكَ وَحْيُهُ وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا Translation Exalted is Allah the true king and do not hasten in the recitation of Quran O noble prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam until its divine revelation has been completed to you 
and pray, my Lord, bestow me more knowledge. Explanation The above verse seems to be one of the earliest revelations when the Prophet wasallam, in order to convey them to the people, was anxious to memorize their revelations. He was, however, assured that he need not worry in this context, as it is the responsibility of Allah to keep the verses in his memory for reciting them to the people. صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم